of the command module. Welcome to Imagination TV. My name is Kalani Ripley, and what makes me who I am is my passion for leadership, entrepreneurship, and most of all, building bridges with people because connection is one of the core parts of being a human. Now, before we get started on today's Imagination TV, we're going to jump to Trey for the acknowledgement of country. Now, Trey, are you there? And are you off mute? Yes. Um... Well, I'm Dun Dun Gutty and Camilla Roy, and I'm Radjuri. So, um, well, Camilla Roy is, the, um, oh, it's a Dilby the Crow and something Capus and the Eagle or something like that. And Dun Gutty is the Praying Manus and the Blue Well, I think. And Radjuri is the Goal Winner and the Pelican, I'm pretty sure. And, um, my nan, she's an all right artist and yeah, she come up from stolen generation from up um, Gundawindi when she, where she was born with her dad and her dad was born in Mangandai. So, um, and well, she found uh, her cultural and her cultural is like where she, she paints things like um, whales and that and she doesn't really know why, because that's what she just paints and stuff. And um, my elders out there, well, I, I send respect to them and stuff and just letting them know that I'm here for my culture and that, yeah. Legend, man. Good on you. Yeah. Now, thank you so much for that. That was awesome. To, yeah. Now, today we're building bridges. Now, how do we create connections across all kinds of human divide? We build bridges, strong bridges, and we etch them with the DNA of human connection. Bridges for us come together and redesign the way the world's work. One of the late, latest bridges we've built is the Making of the Hoodie podcast, where we reach out to schools to co-design a hoodie and tell their story via a podcast. Now, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to play a snippet of the episode we released today that features Dapto High School. Now, let's jump to that. There's kids that feel like they've got a, a, a four walls around them that says, this is you. And getting them to escape from that's really difficult because a lot of their boxes that says, this is you, is not the box that they need around them. They need the box of this is like your, your expansion can be huge. You can do whatever you want. You, you can have cultural significance. You can, you know, and expand and expand and expand. I want to know why you put your hand up first twice. What made you go when an opportunity to jump up here and talk? Why did you put your hand up? Um, I don't know. So, uh, like, I didn't think lots of people would do it. Like, and brave, I guess. How do you be brave? I don't know. I've done it heaps. I've done Aboriginal dancing and didgeridoo. And I know heaps of people, so. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being brave. and. Uh -huh. Thanks for putting your hand up. My name's Charlie Kennedy. I'm in year 12. So I'm the first Indigenous Aboriginal school captain at in 62 years. So that's a big role. It's a huge, huge like honour to be the first one. Like I'm pretty proud of it. Didn't want to do it at the start though. Then. But like I've improved a lot, like with my public speaking, like it's all improved just through being a school captain. Definitely would like to see more of the Aboriginal Indigenous students to step up, take on these big roles, because I believe they all can do it. That was awesome. Now, we are joined by DAPTO High's Deputy Principal, Shane Wood, and the first Indigenous school captain, as we just found out, Charlie Kennedy. We, get, we got a really good sense of the school community you guys have built at DAPTO High. Now, if I would have to ask you, Charlie, if you were to describe what represents your school, what would you say? Uh, for me, I'd say it, inclusivity would be one word because um, it just involves everyone, includes all different genders, ages and cultural backgrounds. That's awesome. Now, I, I, I bet that that's something that makes your deputy principal really proud to hear. And I'm sure that that's something that, that I'm glad that everyone listening is 
wanting to hear. Now you're going to flip the script a bit. You're going to take over our 60 second challenge and you're going to put uh, your deputy principal Shane Wood in the firing line. Now I'll jump over to you, Charlie. Yeah. So with the first question, um, on what occasion are you out of your comfort zone? And in the pre-show, he was grilling Charlie on being on mute. And now he's stuck on mute himself. <laughs> there you go. I'm working now. Uh, I'm going to say, Charlie, right now, you've made me uncomfortable. Yep. <laughs> All right. Second question. Which living person do you most admire? Oh, that's a big one. Uh, which living person do I most admire? Well, I, I, I'm going to say... Real cliche, you at the moment, uh, I think your little podcast spiel said, you know, it was a big honour and you were scared at the start and you've come a long way. Seeing that journey as a leader of the school has been amazing and I think I'd look up to you and I, you often hear Mr Horsley at school say to lots of people, I, when I grow up, I want to be like you, yeah. uh, but you're an inspiration to lots of um, not just young Aboriginal people, but uh, I think everybody at our school, you've done a great job. Thanks, sir. Uh, next question. What's the best question you, you've ever been asked? It's the best question I've ever been asked. It is quick fire, isn't it? Well, <laughs> I had dreadlocks when I was your age, believe it or not. They were down to here. Big, long things. I loved them. I was like Rage Against Machine. Uh, and the, the one that the thing I got asked was, why did you cut them off? You won't know the answer because I've run out of time. <laughs> But you probably want the answer, so I'll give it to you. I couldn't get a job. No one gave me a job with long dreads, so I chopped them off and got myself a job, and it's, uh, you know, look where it got me. Yep. There you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us on Imagination TV and supporting all the work that you guys do uh, and for supporting us. Uh, now I know that I probably won't grow out some dreads if I'm trying to get a job. Now, we have a video for you guys it's the world of mentoring video so let's go ahead and jump to that one now One of the most important thing was actually, you know, uh, uh, creating a stage for youngsters. I was first person from my village to go to university outside of our district. So I, I was, uh, I was previously underprivileged, and then I became privileged by going to the university and you know getting all that good uh, education. So I wanted to, you know, pave that way for other youngsters as well, like me. So I started with AIM only this year, but I heard about it last year and I decided to join because like in my sociology classes, in a lot of my classes, we learn about educational inequality, especially for Indigenous kids. I grew up in Western Sydney, so I could see that even a lot of my friends, maybe they weren't even in, from Indigenous backgrounds, but some of them didn't graduate from high school. Some of them came from family backgrounds that were a bit different than what I'm seeing at uni. So I thought it'd be good to volunteer my time and help kids who don't really to engage with the educational system or don't really find pathways to employment after high school. Every young people need a role model in their lives and mentor can be that role model. I wasn't a top student, you know, that student who sit behind the class, you know, being engaged with the subject, that exactly was me. But when I reached my second year, uh, there was some kind of person or I called them my mentor. Uh, those people are people who guided me, uh, encouraged me, and got me to think that I worth something. And those mentor is the reason why uh, I have a hope. I decided to apply to become an imagination president because I believe in eradicating education inequality 
which is a major problem in South Africa. We have recruited over 50 new mentors and had online Zoom trainings where they got to learn more about what AIM is and their role as an AIM mentor. It was interesting to hear about their reasons for joining AIM and how, even though most of us grow up without mentors, we want the next generation to have a different experience. We're in a bit of a unique situation with six presidents. When we all had our first meeting, six of us sat together and we were figuring out what we want to do. And that's where I think uh, President Peter and myself, because we've mentored before, we kind of knew that side of it. And it was a good mix because Jade, Jordan and Tani all were mentees in the program. I started with AIM in year nine. I was part of the program for year 12 and went into uni and wanted to give back because it did so much for me when I was in high school. Attention everyone, hello, how are you going? My name's Kalani Ripley. I am the AIM president here at Bond. Uh, you know, AIM helped me get through to university with their support. Uh, I thought, you know, I'll give back and, and hope, hopefully become a, bit, a president and I, here I am. What should I say? How do I do this? I was a pretty bad kid. I got expelled from two schools. You know, go me, really a star student. Um, so, <laughs> so when I did that, um, actually AIM came on board and sort of offered me some mentorship and, and help as an AIM mentee. That mentorship really did help me become who I am today. Because our ancestors and 60,000 years of history has proven that resilience is what we are. So I started AIM in my senior year of high school and AIM supported me. Um, like Kalani to do a lot of things with hosting TV, speaking in front of a lot of people. Welcome to Imagination TV, week 21, episode 98. Before, when I was in high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and through mentoring, I kind of had a solid path and AIM gave me the opportunity to come to Bond University and study something that I'm really passionate about. I uh, checked into the AIM website and uh, just the, that statement that was written there that if not you, then who? If not now, then when? That really inspired me. My goal is to eventually uh, carry out a number of tutor squads every week, twice a week, and to ensure that we reach as many mentees as we possibly can and to eventually see the program grow in South Africa, going into other schools uh, where they need uh, this program the most. My hope from becoming an imagination president was uh, to make a community or uh, I would say a bridge where any young students can meet university students. And hopefully from that mentoring program, uh, uh, it can help those students to choose and be the kind of person they want to be. The kids that get through the program really feel connected to it and feel like they do have um, a pathway post school. Like a lot of kids, when we've been talking to them, they seem like they're interested. So making sure that we can actually help them and show them that they can have um, post school, post um, yeah, employment opportunities after school and helping them feel more engaged in classrooms. Every president has gone through obstacles in the past. We all come from a cultural area which has been marginalised and we have that you know, empathy and respect towards each other that we just want to make sure that kids are given the same opportunities. AIM sort of just let me step out of my comfort zone a lot and just sort of pushed me out and just made me proud of my culture which I should be. It's really just an encouraging like environment to come back to like like the teachers you can't get one-on-one -on -one time but with like the, like the AIM tutors you get the one-on-one -on -one time with them. In terms of advice it would be like small goals. It's easier to get started than you might think it is. So even going to a school and just suggesting the program. Even getting one school and getting you and a group of friends going to that school, because I think that puts everything into perspective. That's our main focus, just helping high school students, primary school students get through school or become mentors for them to know that what they're dreaming is possible. 10 hours a year you rock up and you help Indigenous kids close that gap in education and really help them get tertiary pathways so they can end up like me. Hey guys, would you like to sign up? 
AIM gave me a lot of opportunities and I think it's super important for me to give back and if I can help at least one person um, with what they want to do in their life and push them in that direction, then I think that I've succeeded. I think mentoring is the, is the highest form of human potential, you know. Like when you mentor a youngster and when they get inspired by you, when, they, when you're mentoring, let them believe in themselves. Because all that we need to change the world or change ourselves is inside us. So mentor is the one that let that person discover that magic. There you have it. Uh, first thing, I didn't know I was going to be in that video. They came and filmed with us at our recruitment day uh, probably about a month and a half ago, and I just assumed that it was going to be a small little recruitment video, not the whole of, uh, of AIM TV. It was definitely a stitch up. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to jump to our panellists. Now, these are some of the people in the videos, which I'm not sure they knew were going to be in this video as well. So we're going to go ahead and jump to them. Now, I'm going to start off with Sahil. You were pretty prominently featured in this video. Now, let's start off. Who are you? What's your involvement with AIM? We saw a little bit of it before. Thanks, man. Um, well, I'm Sahil, and I'm the Imagination President of the South Coast of New South Wales, um, based in Wollongong. Um, journey with AIM started in um 2018 as a mentor in my first year at uni and um then I saw how the impact of mentoring firsthand for both the mentees and mentors um got the chance to lead the program this year really um excited and grateful for that chance and um yeah we it's been really good so just the president of Wollongong Awesome. And, and, you know, obviously today's show is just about building bridges. And if you could think of one time where you actually did build a bridge with somebody that was really different to you, we obviously had the rehearsal earlier, but it, it you know, the fact that you had, you had to think about it, do you, is it a rare occasion or is it something that always happens at your aim dates? Um, I think it's always happening. Um, I think building bridges are quite constant in our life. I think we always making new connections each time you head to a new school, each time you're talking with a mentee, you're building that bridge, building that connection that overcomes the differences between all of us as people. But I think that bridge can definitely be made. Um, but yeah, I think that would be it. No, completely. And it's it's brutal some of the times where you have to try force yourself to build a connection with somebody, especially when we're recruiting mentors and we're going around on campus. That's the worst. It, it's fun, but man, is that brutal sometimes, those rejections. What, what? No, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, okay. Sorry, Matt. Have a good one. You just got to keep powering through it. Now, I'm going to jump to Max. Now, Max, you've been you've been sitting on the call real quietly, but you know you, you're quite a speaker. You're a year ten student, I believe. Uh, you know, yeah. What, what's your involvement with AIM? Well, what do you do? What? Um. Well, I'm currently in year ten at the moment, and AIM usually comes to our school and like second period every Tuesday. We just get mentored for an hour, and we just get help with work, help with anything, and it's just really useful, which is really good. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad that. So, what high school do you go to? Like, what area is it from? Um, I go to the Denali High School, which is in the Southland Shire area, and great school. Lots of Aboriginal activities to do. Just very fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that Aim's getting involved there. And can you think of a time where you had to build a bridge with somebody that was different to you? Um, well, when I first started year seven at that school, I wasn't, didn't really have any friends there because I moved around like from 45 minutes away. And um, there was, I just like merged into this little group. And then there was this one person that I met. He didn't really like the things that I liked, like basically polar opposites. And then we started talking to each other. And then we just kind of like became friends and things, just started doing things together. And now we're best friends to this day. So it's still good. Yeah. There you go. Well, what do they say? Opposites attract, I think. Now we, we heard from you guys earlier, Shane and Charlie. 
And I think, you know, especially Shane, you're a deputy principal. You have to connect with people. It's basically your job. What, what would be one of the ways or one of the examples that you had to build a strong connection with somebody and, and you know, it might be in, in your previous work or maybe with Charlie or, and what was that like when you may have had to do it digitally as well? Yeah, I think rather than giving a specific example, I'll give my sort of life uh, lesson that I've sort of lived by. And that's uh, a big one is for me, difference, not wrong, different is just different. And I think as soon as you can get your head around that, everyone's going to have a difference of opinion. Everyone's going to have a different background. Everyone's going to have a different story. Everyone's different. And none of that makes them wrong. It just makes them different. And difference, good, because difference, diversity, difference, you know, is what makes our world what it is. And Australia is a a great country to show that difference can bond and work together. So I think you're right. As a deputy principal, uh, you have to be able to build bridges pretty quickly when you know something falls apart but you're also constantly um, in that mode of understanding everybody's got a different aspect so you you work with them on their level you might change the way you you talk in some language you know you, you adjust yourself so making you're not acting you're not being a phony you're connecting and I think if, if we can live a life where we're all connecting with people on their level and connecting with people with what their you know likes and dislikes are it's not that any of that's wrong it's just different and like that's that's sort of like the you know thing I've lived by for a long time so I don't know if you wanted a specific example but I think that that sort of covers my whole living example of how I treat people that that's perfect that's that's what you want. You want to be able to treat people how you wish to be treated. That's, I think everybody's parent has said that to them at some point. And it's, you know, I, I find as well as your parents are your, your biggest, uh, or, or at least your mentor in your life is the person that, that molds you and shapes you on to be the person who you are. Do you, do you have a mentor that has stuck with you or who have been some of your mentors? Uh, I, I could go down a very sad path of stories of uh, male mentors I've looked up to from a very long, young age who have gone and done really bad things. Um, but I think even though a lot of the male mentors that I looked up to growing up didn't end up being a real positive influence in the end, what I was able to gain from them is the, the thing. So again, doing something wrong doesn't make you a bad person um, because a lot of good, you know, a lot of good things have happened from people that end up having done something bad, but when they were doing what they thought was good at the time, they've made lots of positive impacts. So uh, one example would be a a male role model that I took on from a youth center when I was young, fantastic role model, helped me get on my feet, um, you know, basically brought me out of, I'll say poverty because, you know, housing commission family with very little money, lots of hand-me-downs. He went on to become a, a pretty, bad drinker, um, getting a divorce, leaving, a, you know, and you think, oh, what a bad influence. But what he did for me at the time was absolutely positive. So I think the, the there's a lot of names I could say for male role models. And I'm saying male in particular because, you know, I, I didn't have a father growing up. It was just my mother and myself with, with a few brothers and sisters from a stepdad. Um, so there's lots of things I could do. But at the moment, I will send a shout out to uh, our principal at Dapto High School, Mr. Andrew Fitzsimons. Um, I'm sure lots of people have heard of him because he's a very outgoing man, but he's certainly an inspiration um, for someone like myself who's, you know, climbed up the, the ladder to say it in an educational sense and not because, you know, I want more, I want more. I just want to influence uh, a greater part of public education and getting up higher means I can do that. But looking at Andrew, you know, he's in his late 60s and he's, he's running around like he's a, a teenager with energies and Charlie, you, you'll laugh and smile because you know exactly what I'm talking about. But Andrew, he's, he's full of energy. He's got absolute right heart. And I think I look up to him all the time in, in that regard. Wow. That was, uh, that was exactly what I was hoping to get out of that question and, and to get out of the whole panel. That was amazing. And, and I'll jump to Charlie now because I think Charlie is the best person to follow that. What, who have been some of your mentors and, What's a piece of advice that may have stuck with you? And, you know, you don't, you're not forced to say Mr. Wood. <laughs> yeah, he's been one of them. He's... No, no, yes, Charlie, you're forced to say it. The yeah. money bag will come soon. Make sure you say it. <laughs> um, for me, I've, I've had many, like, throughout my life. But I'll say the main two were, like, my mum and dad. Like, without them two, I wouldn't be where I am today and wouldn't be the person I am today. 
um, they just taught me to just see things through, keep pushing, and like the results will come. There you go, sure and sweet, nice. That's, that's what you want. Is it, and it's people's parents and and those mentors in your life that have such a big effect, and that's why I'm so proud to be part of AIM. Now, with COVID and with these lockdowns, we're flipping the script a lot, and we're having to change what we're doing. And I'll jump to Janice now with, with building bridges. And I believe you're in lockdown now. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, Sydney lockdown, which we don't know when will end, possibly a few months. There you go. So you're in Sydney lockdown. You, you're having to flip the script. You're still having to try to get out, connect to these kids. So, you know, what has been some of the ways that you've been able to build those connections in the digital world? Yeah. Um. So unfortunately, when I even started with AIM this year, like Jade lived in Coffs Harbour. So she was kind of telling me what to do. So I never got to meet her in person. So starting off, I had to like make a connection with her digitally. So I think a big part of it is trying to maintain kind of face-to-face communication. Like just texting people online does not work as efficiently. Like we had a mentor training last week and we had some corporate people. So me and like Sahil and some of the other AIM people, we were calling people on their phones at work and then also seeing them in person. It's a big thing. Um, We haven't had schools online with us yet. They're still confirming. But just based on like even doing games nights with my friends, I hope that when I do have kids to talk to on Zoom, just like playing games with them, being interactive and making sure that they know that things can be fun, even though it's online, because we can't really do much about it in spite of COVID right now. Definitely. I think even in our pre-show, we were having pretty having some fun with some failure time and we got to see uh, our producer, uh, Penny, do some break dancing on a chair, which was sensational. That was great. Um, so I think, yeah, you can definitely make a connection and, and it will be something that I look forward to following along uh, down in Sydney, even if I can go to the beach up here. <laughs> now, we're going to jump to Kiali. Kiali, you are an artist, you're determined, you're articulate. And with all that, you know, obviously you're building bridges with people, but you may also be building bridges with some of your artwork. Yeah. So um, my name's Kiali. So I started getting a connection through art through um, one of my elders. Um, her name's Arnie Trish. So I built that bridge with connection to art. I've always like I've been to, always been terrible at. I was like the worst at art in art class in year seven. Worst at art in primary school. I hated art. Went to an art therapy um, at the local Aboriginal Medical Service where they run programs out there. Um, where one of the elders were. I painted one painting. It was terrible. And then I just built a connection with my artwork, and I just kept going and going each week, once a week. And then started buying canvases and paints to do at home. I was like so terrible. Didn't know, you know, what the symbols mean on my artwork. Um, I researched it, studied myself, learned from my elders. Um, and, yeah, I've recently sold two of my artworks in an art gallery down at Kayama, um, which is pretty deadly. And I've got my own small business on Instagram page. And I sell canvases, tissue boxes, placemat sets, and hair scrunchies. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's amazing. Now, we're going to go ahead and just jump over to Trey. Now, Trey, you've been waiting there patiently. I appreciate it. We saw you at the top of the show. Now, you're, you're a great speaker. And uh, what's been your involvement with AIM and, and you know, who are you? You're on mute. My name's Trey Worth, and um, well, I've had AIM come to my school before, and they've helped me for, like for some hard things and that. So they, yeah, they get me through things, and um, and um, so I can like bond with um, other people and that, like be um f- relationships and friends with everyone and stuff. So yeah, it's really good how AIM come over. And said hello and that and helped me with my work at school and um yeah so it was pretty good and um the relationships that I find out from good people and stuff so it's really fantastic that you find out what you can find and stuff so yeah that's awesome that's awesome yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad Ames really helps you out now yeah 
I'm gonna I'm gonna head back to Kiali. Now, I, I the only reason I'm heading back is because I'm terrible at art. I am horrendous. I failed three years in a row. I've switched like three schools, so maybe that was the reason. But I also failed three years in a row. It's because I switched schools, not because I can't draw. But with that being said, did do you find that you're often pulling from that knowledge that you've gained from your elders now with your art, or do you sort of try to find and mold your own path, build your own bridge? Um, I kind of build my own bridge. So like, well, kind of both, I would say, um, because I get a lot of like I get obviously like all my ideas like all my artwork is my own artwork and like I build a bridge between my artwork and myself um so yeah that's awesome now I'm gonna for our final question I'm gonna jump back to Charlie I'm putting you in the hot seat now you're you're an outgoing bloke and I, I think that you have a really big impact on the people that are around you and your, your deputy principal definitely confirms that as he's hot nodding now. So if you had to have a 10 second message to the kids around the world listening, what would that be? Um, just definitely don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Um, just always, just always like aim high. You'll like, you'll get there in time. There you go. Aim high, everyone, and thank you guys all for coming on the show and sharing your knowledge and building bridges. Now, I'm hopefully, you know, we'll be back next week to, to for next week episode. Hopefully, you guys will be able to uh, join us back on at sometimes. So, thank you guys so much for watching.